chapter 5 we're going to be adding to the basic work we've done so far by looking at parameters and sessions. We'll begin by adding a find by author use case and this will give us a chance to pass a string parameter from our web page to our controller. Once our second use case has been written I'll show you that it is possible to combine related controllers into a single class. And then we'll look at how to handle sessions. Okay then, the next job is to implement a find by author use case. You'll notice in your project there's a JSP file already prepared for you called find by author. It's just a regular JSP file that renders a simple form. The idea is we'll type in the name of an author using this input text field here, the parameters called author, and we're going to click and we'll get all the books back by that particular author. And we'll see in this chapter how we can implement a controller to do this using Spring MVC. As always, the controller will be delegating to a model with the actual logic, such as calling a database and so on. Now, as in the previous chapter, we're going to be working with a mock service object, the book service mock implementation. And once again, as before, if you want and you're able to do so, you can easily switch in a true database implementation of this class. But you'll see here we have a very basic implementation of a get all books by author method and we don't really need to care about the actual implementation of that. So here's the JSP and at the moment the action is pointing nowhere. So the very first thing I'll do is think of a name for this action. It can be anything you like as long as you remember what it is. I'm going to go for find by author dot do. Now we need to write a matching Spring MVC controller for this action. And the process for doing so is going to be pretty much the same as we did in the previous chapter. Recall that previously we wrote the view all books controller and we mapped it using an annotation to the action view all books dot do. So I'm going to do a very similar process now for find by author. Now I've just cut out the last couple of minutes of typing because it's all very boring and routine for you. Here's my class which as in the previous chapter is a plain old Java class. I've injected a book service into the class and I've written a method called find by author which I've mapped to the action find by author. Now my problem is what do I do inside this method? Well as before I need to call the book service and there's the method there get all books by author. Now we need to get hold of this author value from the web form. Now how do we do that? In traditional web frameworks we'd need to use the servlet API here but Spring MVC is a lot cleverer. Spring MVC enables us to simply pass the name of the author in this case into the controller method. So I just declare it as if it was a regular parameter into the method. And then I can use it in my service method, which is going to return a list of books, which I then return back as in the previous chapter as part of a model and the view. Now remember from the previous chapter that the first parameter in the model and view controller is the name of the view that we want to render. I could go and write a brand new JSP page capable of displaying the results of this use case. But I'm going to do a little trick here. Remember in the previous chapter we wrote a JSP page called display all books. Let's have a quick look at that just to remind ourselves. The idea of this page was to display all of the books in the catalog. We did that by passing across a JSP variable called all books. Well, I've just realized that really there's nothing to stop me using 
this page to display the results of finding by author. As long as I pass across a variable called all books, this page will render just fine. Now, if you're following along at home and you'd rather write a custom page for this use case, feel free, but it does seem like a, a good idea to reuse our previous work. So I'm going to, therefore, my first parameter is the name of the view I want to render, displayallbooks.jsp. The second parameter here is the name of the variable that I'm sending across, so all books. And the third parameter is the name of the object that I'm passing across. And for here, that's going to be books. Now, I've got a very silly mistake there. I've used the plural there for the type of object I'm passing across in the list and the old control shift O to bring those imports into view, the book class and the Java util list class. And now everything is compiling just fine. So we'll run a build and deploy. And as always, we'll check the console and make sure that that deploys OK. And there we are. And now time to test in our browser. Now here's the browser from the previous chapter. And at the moment, we're looking at the View All Books page. And to test this use case, we need to go to our initial form. There's two ways we can do this. Either we can navigate to findbyauthor.jsp here, or you can follow the convenient link that we provided for you in this header. So this is the initial form where I need to type in the name of the author that I'm interested in. And I'm going to go for, let's say, Charles, if I can spell Charles Dickens, and we'll click on find. Hold our breath, and it's not working. Now, this is really quite important in Spring MVC. I think we had a similar problem in the previous chapter, but it's worth repeating that errors in Spring MVC I don't think are particularly well reported. Let's have a look at what we can see here. Well, it's saying HTTP status 404, which means resource not found. In other words, it's not able to find out action find by author dot do. Or to put it another way, our controller is not being recognized. Unfortunately, there's no friendly message here and not much in the way of a description, but at least we have a clue. Our controller is not being recognized. Another thing you should get into the habit of doing whenever you get these kind of errors is to check the console. Now, the console isn't very friendly, and I just hate looking at this complete mess. But if we just go down to the bottom here, it is saying warning, no mapping found for the request find by author dot do in the dispatcher servlet. In fact, really, that's just another way of saying find by author dot do does not have a matching controller. Well, that doesn't sound right because we did write the controller. So back in Eclipse, what do we need to look at? Well, the things to check are in order to have a controller working, you need to have the request mapping with the correct name of the action appearing in here. Now, our action was called find by author dot do. And in fact, as you saw in the previous chapter, this is therefore correct. We don't need the dot do in the request mapping. So that seems OK. And the other thing to check is, aha, we must register this class as being a controller. We need the controller annotation at the top of the class. We did that in the previous chapter. This time around, I simply forgot. It is rather unfortunate that we don't get a very friendly error when we forget to put the controller annotation in place. A control shift O to make sure that it's correctly imported. So a very minor mistake, and it is the kind of mistake that you can lose quite a lot of time investigating. So 
do watch out for that. Well, it appears to be compiling, so I will rerun my build. Check the deployment in the console, and there it goes. And now let's go back to the browser, and we'll go back, and we'll rerun this use case. We don't need to refresh this page. Clicking Find will attempt to rerun the controller. And it's another exception. Well, this time it's a null pointer exception. And well, we could investigate the call chain in detail, but I'll cut to the chase. It's a null pointer exception because the author that's coming in from the form here in the controller is actually null. And that's because there's one last thing I haven't told you, and that is we do need to add an annotation to every parameter that's